In this video, I'm going to give a brief overview of my AFib experience and how AFib has affected my life. And be sure to stick around until the end where I'll provide an update about how my heart is doing three years after ablation. I can't believe that was three years ago. When I got AFib, I went through a lot of emotions. I was sad, confused, scared, but mostly I was really pissed off. I had always taken good care of my body. I ate well, avoided smoking, rarely drank alcohol, and I regularly exercised. But one day, out of the blue, and for no reason I could identify, my heart started pounding and beating erratically in my chest. At first, my AFib episodes would come and go, usually not lasting for more than a couple of hours. I had no idea what was going on. I definitely didn't know this was AFib at this point. I would usually just write it off as stress or anxiety. When these episodes would pass, I felt completely normal. I was strong and confident. I could exercise. I thought there was no way my heart would do that again, but without fail, and when I was least expecting it, my heart would go into AFib again, and this would throw my life into chaos. During my AFib episodes, I would feel like a cloud of dread moving over my body. I felt nervous, unsettled, moody, and full of anxiety. I had a hard time catching my breath, got lightheaded. I felt like my heart was flopping around inside my chest. I would take my pulse, and I could feel it was skipping beats and being completely erratic. AFib made me feel tired both physically and mentally. I believe my first AFib episode was in the summer of 2019, and it wasn't until January of 2020 that I finally decided I should see a doctor. I was sure the doctor was going to tell me that this was just anxiety and I was healthy but just needed to relax more. That is not what he said. After taking a look at my EKG results, he looked up at me and said, you have atrial fibrillation. I was shocked. Let's talk about the AFib medications I've taken. Right after being diagnosed, my primary care doctor prescribed me metoprolol and baby aspirin. I only took these meds for a very short amount of time until I saw my first cardiologist. He changed my prescription to flecainide and said that I did not have to take the baby aspirin any longer. I was only on the flecainide for about 10 months, but it did very little to stop my AFib episodes as they continued to come more often and last longer. Because of this, my doctor put me on Eliquis, which is an anticoagulant. By January of 2021, I was having AFib episodes lasting more than 24 hours multiple times a week. Because the meds did little to slow down my AFib, my doctor said it was time for an ablation. Even though I was terrified of having this procedure and had vowed to do everything I could to manage AFib without an ablation, which included lifestyle changes, medications, relaxation techniques, etc., as none of these had worked, deep down I was ready to go through with the ablation. AFib was so hard on me physically and mentally that I was desperate to try anything, so I had the ablation in February of 2021. I won't go into all the details of my ablation in this video because I've made a couple other videos with the specifics of my ablation. I'll link to those videos at the end of this video and in the video description if you want to check those out to get the full story about my ablation experience. But I will tell you is that I was very lucky because my ablation went really well. I arrived at the hospital early in the morning, met with the nurses and doctors, got prepped, and went into the cath lab and had the ablation. In the United States, it is more common for doctors to use general anesthesia which I had and was completely out during the entire procedure. I remember waking up in the recovery room and I could see my heartbeat on the monitor and it was in perfect rhythm. Not long after that, I went to another recovery room, met up with my wife, ate some lunch, and was sent home the same day. I did have some minor discomfort where the catheters were inserted and very minor chest pain, but overall, the procedure was very easy on me. I'm very lucky and thankful for that. Then in my follow-up appointment with the electrophysiologist, he allowed me to quit taking all my AFib medications. He was very pleased with how well I was doing, how well I was healing, how well my heart had healed. I was also in good shape physically and had maintained a very healthy body weight. Another thing is I was relatively young compared to most AFib patients, and these are the reasons why I was able to get off my AFib medications. So now it has been over three years since I had my ablation, and I'm happy to report that I have still not had any AFib at all since my ablation. My heart has stayed in perfect sinus rhythm, and I'm still completely off all of my AFib meds. I'm so thankful for that. I continue to monitor my heart with my Apple Watch. I've had several doctor's appointments not related to AFib, where I've had EKGs recently, and they've all been perfect. I do want to take a quick second to thank you all for your support. So many of you have reached out and wished me well with my health struggles, even beyond AFib. As many of you know, I also got a rare form of appendiceal cancer last year and had a couple of major surgeries. So far, all of my treatments for the cancer have gone very well, and I'm doing great. I just really appreciate all the support this community has given me. I love you all. I do plan to get back to making videos on this channel, so if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so. And also hit the like button to help this video. Right here is the link to my most popular ablation video. If you wanna check that out, or if you wanna watch another video that YouTube thinks you would really enjoy, 
check out this video here. I hope you're all doing well. Take care and I'll see you soon.